G. Marshall. Of all the tales I tell, the ones that crawl most across the skin and creep along the spine are those that bring the wronged out of the grave to seek redress from the living. And of all of those, this one, to me, is one of the very most haunting and chilling. I took the bearings all them years ago when it first was appearing. From Gladscar to Mardike's jetty and from under the old Georgian dragon sign here to the White House below Forrick Falls. I could fix a marker boy over the very spot. Maybe it was a marker boy you saw, Captain Jack. Uh, it was no marker. It was a woman. And I say it's Libby Filtrum. Back to collect her due for her. mystery drama, The Smile of Death, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Russell Horton. The pretty little town of Golden Friars stands by the margin of a sizable lake, hemmed around by an amphitheater of purple mountains, a place where legends are born and persist. And those most responsible for keeping them alive are inside the warmth of the George and Dragon pub. Dead as a wet night. Seems like both natural and unnatural things are having a bit to say about Surveyor's return to Mardike's Hall, Dr. Torby. What with the thunderstorm coming on the hills of your mentioning that the baronet was coming home and her being seen again? Her? The woman in the lake. Oh, Libby Feltrum? Elizabeth Feltrum that was. Before Sir Bale deserted her and her children to marry the Baroness with all the money. A ghost. Very murdered 15 years ago. Oh, come now, Jack murdered the girl, disappeared, that's all. Carrying one child and abandoning the other. We were holding out a baby in her arms when we came near her. Before she disappeared, the ghost woman. But uh, was she Libby Feltrum? She had a scarf or veil like bound around about her face. And a great cloak with a big hood like them monks will be wearing. With her face all in shadow. When was it you saw this sight? Yesterday, off the point of Snake's Island. The exact same spot she showed up to begin with all them years ago. Oh, it's Libby Filtrum, all right, back to collect her due for her and her unborn child. Murder will out. I tell you there was no murder. Why, why should she run away? Why should she leave them to another woman? But don't I, dear Trumbull, don't you see? That's just the point. Oh, I, I'm not defending Bale's conduct or his morals. But the fact is that he and Elizabeth were never married. She had no claim on him legally. All her children. Still and all, Doctor, she might have made quite a bit of trouble with the Baroness. If she'd still been about. She only disappeared two days before the Baroness came down for the wedding. And showed up in the lake every day from then until they went to Europe. Stark and straight out of the water. Hip I The way no human being could support itself. Oh, Captain, it's an illusion or some trick of the mists against the background of Snake Island. So Bill will be all by himself coming home. Oh, yes, yes, yes. The Baroness died a few months ago, pneumonia. I wasn't thinking of her. I was thinking of the boy. Oh, oh Philip. Oh, well, that I don't know. We shall have to be patient till the end of the week when the Baroness arrives. 
Oh, dear me, where'll be the mail coach stopping? Perhaps the bill decided to hurry up his return. My opinion, he's been summoned. From what I can see through the rain, it's not Sir Bale. No, no, this looks to be a younger man and tall. Well, 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 we'll soon see. He's on his way in with the landlord. I could uh, whisk you up some supper, sir. Cheese and some steak and kidney pie, if you'd like. No, 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 thank you. All I require is a little information and a smaller noggin of brandy. Oh, no, no, be, be right back with it. Mm-hmm. Wait, it's a Draw close to the fire, sir. Oh, we have a cold, unpleasant night, eh? I thank you, sir. You, uh... You're a stranger in these parts? I could say so, yes. <laughs> you, you surprised us after a fashion because we were ex- in expectation possibly of someone else. Our local baronet, Sir Bale Mardike. There is your brandy, sir. Uh, thank you, mine host. Yes, Mardike's hold is a very pretty object from the lake, sir, and very much admired about here. As is the house of the Fentrum. At the end of the glen, for all its wrecked and in ruin now, close to the house that was on the opposite side of Lake Hill. Exactly opposite. Fertrum. Well, that was one of our great families down here. Whew. Dwindle to nothing now. A pox on both their houses. Nothing but trouble. The woman who rises out of the water of Snake Island has foretold. Uh, pay no attention to him. Um, I, I'm afraid I have no time. Uh, this should be enough to pay for my brandy. Now, uh, my noggin of information. Is Mrs. Juliper well and in good health and still under the roof of Mardike's Hall? Oh, yes, indeed she is. I saw her only this day, bustling about getting all in readiness for Sir Bale's return. Only Sir Bale? Oh, yes, as far as I know. Perhaps it is as well that I preceded him. If you will excuse me? A uh, moment, no, sir, if you will. Uh, this room is not well lighted, and I'm no longer as young as I was. Uh, should I not uh, recognize you? Not really. I am quite different from the babe you brought into the world, Dr. Torvi. Good heavens. As, as you must know already, I am... Philip Feltrum. And now, if you will excuse me, I must go prepare for the return of my master. No, who can that be? Oh, all right, Mother Juniper. Don't stop to speculate. Just stir your own legs and open the door. Help you? I know I've changed, Mopsy, but that much. Oh, 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 Master Philip. <laughs> oh, sure, I'd never have recognized you in a thousand years. Oh, my dear boy, come in. Come. Well, aren't you going to give me a hug? Oh, you're a little big for that now, but all I have to do is to be asked. <laughs> oh, my precious little Philip. Oh, Mopsy. Oh, my, my. Oh, how you've grown. Ten years it must be since I packed your little carpet bag and saw you off by coach for the continent the day the master took you away from me. The master? Sir Bale. Who oh, is he with you now? Mm, no, no, he he won't be down till the weekend. Then we'll... Oh, then we'll have a little time together. <laughs> so nothing's changed, is it? In all these years... If you mean Sir Bale, I'm afraid not. And the Baroness is dead. Mm. All her money gone with her. It'll be a hard row to eke out all our livings here at Mardike's Hall. He'd never be back here if he weren't desperate. I said nothing was changed. But it isn't true. You are, Philip. Oh, my little Philip. Where is all the joy you had of life? The laughter you found in everything? (sighs) Uh, where is Papa Juliper? Oh, John. He died two years ago. Oh. A quiet, happy death. Don't you miss him? Oh, every moment of every day. But we had 40 years together. A lot of memories for an old lady to live out life on. I still have the same joy for life. 
the love I tried to give you when I brought you up now. When, when we did, John and me, before your father took you away from us to Germany. Didn't you find any happiness there, Philip, boy? Judge for yourself. I was not welcomed by my mother-in-law. Perhaps I rested too hard on my father's conscience. No, no happiness, Mopsy. Stay there a moment, driver. I'll raise the house and we can do some help with the luggage. In the name of the devil is anyone but So Bill! This is Juniper. Glad to see you're still alive. Where is my natural offspring? To speak of him as kindly as possible. Why isn't he here and ready to greet me? Oh, we didn't expect you tonight. Sir Philip. Sir Philip? Well, I meant Philip. He took the trap over Clouston Way to bring my niece back. If you're to be making your home here, I, I thought we'd need a little extra help. Who asked you to make arrangements I didn't order? Well, in your letter, you said to make all ready to open the hall. I didn't ask you or Philip to make any plans for me beyond those I issue myself. Well, I'm afraid it's my fault. No, it is Philip's. I thought by now I'd taught him to have no mind of his own. Not for want of trying. But you won't succeed. What does that mean? Come here with me. Across the drive and out to the edge of the terrace. There. Look out across the lake towards Snake's Island. I abhor that lake. Water of any kind. I won't. I can't. You must, Sir Bale. Must? How dare you? Because I'm old in your service and not long for this world. He's still waiting for you. Who? Philip's mother. There. See her in the moonlight before Snake's Island. Standing above the water, reaching to you for all the things she never had from you. Uh, Libby. Yes, Libby. Elizabeth Feltrum. Who do you think it was brought you back here at last? What is that luminous shape that drifts in the eddying mist, reflecting the soft, deceiving light of the moon? Is it the apparition that gossip believes rises from the lake, crying out for justice? Or is it some trick of refracted light, like the Loch Ness monster could be, or the spinning disc of a UFO? I'll return shortly with Act Two. A glowering Sir Bale Mardykes gazes across the lake. Then suddenly a cloud passes across the moon and the shimmering expanse of water darkens and disappears. And with it, the specter, apparition, or illusion that seemed to hover over it. As though released from a spell, the baronet turns on his heel, heading back towards the house. The old woman hard put to it to keep up with his rapid pace. All right, driver. You may take all my luggage and file it inside in the hall. When my servant returns, I'll have him put it away where it belongs. Here, take this for your service. This is Juniper. I shall be in the study before a fire to banish this chill from my bones. Is there brandy there? Yes, sir. Would you care for a bite to eat? No, no. I want to be alone till Philip returns. But I want to see him the moment he does. The moment. Do you hear? Twilight, Mr. Feltram. Maybe we'd better hurry. Not not for me. I'm in no hurry to face my my employer if he's arrived yet. Well, now, that's a strange thing to say. Your employer? Isn't that what he is? Well, well I, I, I don't mean to say anything out of turn, but Mrs. Juniper's my aunt, and I know she brought you up from the time you were four till you were twelve. Yes. Mopsy's the only real parent I ever had. I'm a bit confused. I mean, I know your own mother disappeared like, but you've been with your own father since you were 12 in Europe. My father, yes, in, 
In a manner of speaking, it isn't quite the same when you've been born, as the uh, phrase goes, on the wrong side of the blanket. Well, I realize a stepmother isn't quite the same as a real one. Oh, I had a few quarrels with my stepmother. She was a cold, remote, unhappy woman. But the man from whose seed I came is something else again. I wish you weren't so bitter. I'm not bitter, Jenny. Just... Just beaten, cowed, and whipped, and as much a slave as if I were clothed in iron. Mr. Philip. Please, just Philip. All right, then, Philip, if you wish. But you mustn't give up on life, not at our age. Oh, there's too much of it left to live. Where anything's possible. Yes, you haven't met Sir Bale yet. And, uh... Maybe I had better make a little better time. Bessie. Oh. Oh. Lord of mercy, I thought you'd never get here. What were you up to? Nothing, Aunt Margaret. Oh, I'm sure I wouldn't blame you, the two of you so bright and young, if you had dawdled a bit on the way. That was my fault, Mopsy. Well, glad I am to hear it. Shows you have some spirit left in you, for you'll need it. Oh, he's in a black mood, the master is, and waiting for you in the study. Uh, I'll go see him right away. I think it's terrible. I mean, how can his father treat him the way he does? Oh, indeed. All for the want of a little scrap of paper. For he's his son. You've only to look at the eyes to see that. But because he has no legal standing, the father has broken him twisted all the joy and life out of him. You mock my words, Jenny. He'll pay for that before he dies. Where the devil have you been, Feltrum? I, I, I went to fetch Mop, uh, uh, Mrs. Juliper's niece from around the end of the lake. No need of that. If she wanted the work so badly, she could have walked here. It's 20 miles or more. Thunderation, you weren't all the way around to the old coasted house, poking around? Uh, no. Well, why would I have gone there? I, well, no matter. No matter. You were gone long enough. Most of the day. S- sir, I didn't want to push the mare, and it, <laughs> it was so pretty by the lake. Pretty? It... By damn, if I had my way, I'd bring the miserable thing little better than a cesspool. I had no wish to anger you. I needed you, and where were you? Needed needed me? Yes. We've come back to a shambles and a trap. The books are hopeless mess, rents unpaid or uncollected, debts, and scarce enough money to keep the roof over our own heads, let alone Mrs. Juliper's. Jenny had come to help her aunt. She she asks little in return. Even that little, I doubt if we can provide. If, if there's some way I could help them... I have... want the papers in order. I want to know who owes what. I'll dun them or take everything away from them that they possess. One way or another, we must have money. We must find a way to get it no matter what it costs. If... if... You'll excuse me, Sir Bale. I I did arrange to have funds set aside, but you used them to bet on the horses. You puling little mistake of my youth. Don't presume to criticize me. I wasn't criticizing. I was only trying to explain. Ah, The devil with your explanations. I need money. Now get out and ride the balancey. Bleed it out of the tenants who've been living off my absence for all these years. But they have paid faithfully, sir. You... Then find a way to make them pay some more. Unless you want all of us to starve to death. Why do you take it, Philip? You don't have to be beholden to him. He isn't to you. Oh, it doesn't matter anymore. What does is that I'm back here. Home. You think of this as home? Well, not the house, the surroundings, the... What lies outside and calls me all the time. Telling me my strength and hope is there. Oh, I think you should get away from here, Philip. Would you go with me? Yes. Uh, Jenny, where would I go? Where, Where could I take you? It wouldn't matter. No... No, there's got to be a better answer than that. I... I must have something to offer you. Didn't you say less than three days ago that you wished you had a hundred pounds? A wish, yes. Which you translated into reality. 
Beg pardon? No, don't play with me. I have here in my desk a 100-pound note. Now, where's it gone? You think I took it? Where else could it go? Uh, and why would I take it? To fly forever from your bondage? To to escape your vicious tongue, your, your, your constant derogation, your resentment of me because of the past I remind you of? My dad, sir. I will not listen to some young puppy. You oh, need this. not listen, sir. For this young puppy is unfortunately grown to an age of decision. I want... I want no more of your barbarity, your hate, your venom. I'm old enough to choose my own path. Financed by the money you stole. I didn't touch it. Uh, believe it, if you will, I am leaving. And where are you going? Back to my heritage. Back to the lake. And across it to where my family's home still stands. Back to test the legend you fear. That at last the Mardike's baronetcy and estates will pass to the Feltrums. That is destiny's decision. Oh, you, you can't go out on a night like this. Why not? It was a night like this that bid me home. occasion. What is it? What the devil are we being roused from bed for? A corpse, a male. Drowned under circumstances all the years on the water cannot credit and brought home to you. Who is it? Your son, Philip Petram. Give me leave to have my men bring his body in. came to me and offered me five pounds to have me and my men row him across the lake immediately and to pass by the north end of Snakes Island. Five pounds, eh? A lot of money, I knows. But it was a rough night and I had to pay extra for oars. We were nigh on to Snake Island when a squall hit it suddenly and we broached to fighting the riptide. Well, that was when we lost him. He fell overboard. Oh, no, Chabels, it weren't exactly like that. There was lightning, as you know, and coming around the point of the island, all of a sudden, like, there was what you might call a <laughs> illusion. What kind of an illusion? The figure of a woman above the waterline? Oh, no, not that one, sir. This was an end. A woman's hand that reached up from the water and that Mr. Philip bent over to grasp. And before we knew it, he was overboard and underwater and lost. But you brought him back again? Yes, sir. We, uh, we eased up on our oars. And all of a sudden, his body was floating calm and peaceful-like. We hauled him aboard. Not a thing we could do. Empty his lungs of water. Try the artificial respiration. Nothing. Nothing would bring him to. So we... brought him home here. Oh, there's no question at all, Sir Bill. You did everything you could and more. And I'm sure Captain Jack and his men did... Uh, Terrible thing, terrible thing. You're quite sure, Philip, is... Well, that he's, he's drowned. No pulse, no respiration. Cold as a lead image in the garden. Oh, no. Philip is dead. Damned, irritating little fool. How am I to make do without him? It's a great loss, one's only son. Now, ah, you think I care for that? He was a weakling and a burden. But I had uses for him as a servant... Worst of all, he's stolen a hundred pounds from me and left me without a penny. As to that, Sir Bale, you'll have reason to be ashamed. Here's your hundred pound note. What? I found it among some papers in the waste paper basket that you asked me to empty. So you drove him from the house for nothing to his death. Well, how was I to know? By gad, Dr. Torby, can't something be done about that corpse? He's... He's grinning at me as if he'd pulled off some trick or something. Rhesus Sardonicus. The smile of death, Sir Bale. Rigor Mortis is setting in. No! No! What is it? What is it? 
Where's the Jenny Lamb? I went in to have a last look. Because I, I, I loved him so. It, there he was, rising from the bed. What the devil is all the racket and excitement? You may well raise his name. For look. He's oh. ghost. Don't be alarmed. I am no ghost. I'm alive and well. In fact, I have never been in more complete control of my faculties in all my life. Who and what is he, this Philip Feltrum who was drowned and pronounced dead medically? Man or ghost? And almost as amazing and inexplicable is the change in his character, the ring of authority and strength in his tone that all three who face him at that midnight hour react to. I'll return shortly with Act Three. Whatever metamorphosis Philip Feltrum had gone through... He is a very different individual from the meek, subservient excuse for a man that he had been. Sir Bale, unable to adjust to their new relationship, was hesitant and defeated. He was no longer the master from the very first morning after Philip's renaissance for more reasons than one. What's that, Feltrum? The beginning of the restoration of the Mardike's fortune, I hope. It's a leather purse with money in it. Go. Guinness. A small fortune. No need to count them. There are 300. A drop in the bucket, but a beginning. What do you mean, a beginning? Properly used, they can multiply. How? <laughs> B-swing, falcon, and lightning. What? The names mean nothing to you? No, I... Oh, stop a bit. They're horses. In the weekend races. Two of them, anyway. Right? Correct. All of them. Well, what of it? You're not suggesting that any of this money should be bet on them. I am. But they're all so rands. They have the chance of winning. Would you like this purse of gold? Well, naturally. Where did it come from, anyway? From a... a gypsy. Lent to me to lend to you under certain stringencies. What? That you use it to advance your fortunes, but... That you must bet at least five guineas each on the horses I named. And the rest? You may use as you choose. Always remembering that the debt must be repaid. When? When the gypsy chooses to call for it. Who is this gypsy? What's his name? I cannot reveal that. Well, I don't know that I want to be involved in something so secretive. What choice do you have? Or do you wish me to return the purse? Damn you. No. If it amuses you... Keep your secret. I shall go to the Heckleston race course and live up to the letter of the bargain. But let me reassure you and your mysterious gypsy, Sir Bale Mardykes is still his own man. Welcome home, Sir Bale. Good day at the races. Do you ask me that only to vex me? Why, no. I'd heard your horses won. Damn your hide. You heard that, did you? Yes, and at 40 to 1 on Bee's Wing, 60 to 1 on Lightning, and 50 to 1 on Falcon. Now, let me see. At 100 guineas apiece, that should make... I didn't bet that way. I bet the favorites. Oh, 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 that wasn't the agreement. I lived up to the agreement. Rot your soul. I put five guineas apiece on the horses and came away from that with a take of 775 guineas. But you might have made some 15,050 pounds if you'd followed the handicapping. I want to meet this gypsy with the second sight. That can be arranged. Come with me now and we'll sail across the lake to the other side where you can meet your benefactor. No, no man nor any other force will put me on that lake. But you can help me, my boy. How? Find me one of your magic winners through this gypsy for next weekend's races. And I'll plunge all this time. I'll let you know tomorrow. I have your answer, Sir Bale. Yes? I took your money to... to my principal. 
who was angry and displeased that you did not come yourself. However, I have a name for you to put your remaining winnings on. Another bonanza at long odds. The winner at Langton Lee will be Silver Bell. May you be banished to eternal hell. I believe this is all a scheme of yours to ruin me, Fultrum. Why? What happened? I was fool enough to take the other money I'd won, mortgage what I could of the estate, and put it all together to win a paltry 7,000 with 20,000 bet. How could you risk everything on a mere word from me? Silver Bell was the favorite. There was no chance for him to lose, except ill luck at the far turn that set his hoof in a pothole and tore his fetlock. I'm ruined. All this is gone. A state, house, everything I own. You could recover it if you so desired. Cross the lake with me, and the baronetcy can still be saved. To meet this gypsy of yours? Yes. <sighs> what chance have I left? Very well. Let's go. <laughs> Must we set a course so near that accursed snake's island? What have you to fear? Nothing. Well, don't tell me you expect to see the famous specter rise from the sea. I tell you nothing. Get us ashore to meet this mysterious gypsy who holds my life in his hands. A new experience for you. Ah, you seem to be enjoying this. Part payment for all you've put me through, perhaps. Where are you taking me, Philip? Philip. Doesn't that name sound strange on your lips after all these years? Have no fear. I'm leading you to one who will restore your fortunes. I... I think I want to turn back. You can't. The course is set. The die is cast. This old oak is as far as I go. You're, you're, you're not going to lead me? The path is marked. Between the ash trees to the cliffside. From there to the mulberry bush that marks the entrance to the cave. And there? Your future and your past. I don't understand you. All your life a weakling and a burden, and now all of a sudden all this strength. Ever since your accident. How? You remember the fable of Actaeon in Greek mythology? Who drew his strength from the ground and lost it when lifted above it? Exactly. I was drawn into the water, but rose refreshed and invigorated as if newborn. Go seek the one you must find, and you will know why at last. Well, I, I, I don't know if I have the courage. You've gone too far to turn back. You can never turn back anymore. You will find the one you seek in the darkling cave. Hello? Hello? So, you came back. Tell me, babe. You... Can it be you, Lippy? Does my appearance shock you? The eroded flesh. Barnacles that cling in my hair. The whitening bones. Oh, Lord. What can I say? Nothing. That isn't why I bade you here. Well, it, that, there's no excuse for me, I know, but... I, who is I? I was young. I was... Foolish and desperate. The Baroness meant money and a future and escape. <laughs> escape from me and the two children you tore from my body. I, I took care of Philip. Oh, yes, after your fashion. The one that was never born was less than murder. I, I, I was desperate then. How desperate are you now? Well, that... That, that is, it's... It, it's another situation. But you are desperate. You stand on the brink of ruin. Yes. Then, will you strike a bargain with me? What? Who do you think sent you the purse with the 300 guineas? Or told you the horse that would win? Well, you stared me wrong on the most important one. Of course. Because I had to teach you a lesson and bring you here at last. So we could make a bargain with life. Oh, this is madness. You are long dead and gone. What are we discussing? Your future and Philip's and mine. I don't understand. I'll explain it for you. 
I will give you money again. And I will name you horses which will make you a rich man. And the house of Mardike secure. On one condition. That you give me what you should have nearly 25 years ago. Your name. What? How can I marry you? You're 25 years dead. Philip has made all arrangements with the vicar. If you meet me at the altar of Golden Friars Church tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, the wedding will be performed. But why? Why now? It's impossible. My dowry will be a purse of gold of 10,000 pounds. And the name of the horse which will ensure my dykes and its heirs for all time. Till we meet. I will be there. Whatever else betides, I will be there. Dearly beloved, we are met here in the sight of God to join this man and this woman in oh, the meeting bay. In this case, Captain Drake, the woman from the light, Mr. Trumbull. What are you talking about, man? That's only an apparition. A ghost. A great woman. So was Philip, her son. But he rose from the watery grave. Ah, don't talk of such things in the church. It's Lippy Felton, all right. Come back. But she's alive. She spent last night at my inn. Why? You saw her face? No, no, no. She was veiled, just as she is now at the altar. Do you, Elizabeth Stanford Feltrum, take this man, Sir Bale Mardite, to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. And uh, do you, Sir Bale Mardite, take this woman, Elizabeth to be your lawful wedded wife. I do. Then, by the virtue of the power rested in me as a vicar of God, I do now pronounce you man and wife. Dear Jenny girl, what are you crying for? Uh, it was so beautiful, Auntie. Her coming back after all these years and finally taking her rightful place as Lady Mardyke. I wish my mind rested as easy as yours. And Philip, his rightful name at last and the stain taken away. Philip Mardyke. Oh, where will the bride and groom sleep this night? Marlium. Nothing would do but Sir Bale must off to the races his wedding night. Oh, no good to a marriage which starts with gambling. Oh, it was doomed anyway, out of the past. You mark my words, Jenny. There is worse to come. Don't pop your eyes at me, my girl. I'm alone, as you can see. But the Lady Mar... Lady Mardykes will not be coming here. Get Philip and have him bring the rest of these heavy bags to my room. Um, uh, oh, where do you want these, Father? Put them on the bed with the others. Uh, I shall have little enough use for it again. I'll get the door. Oh, they are heavy enough. Uh, she gave me three horses to parley at unbelievable odds. And ten thousand pounds to wager. There's over a million on the bed. More than enough to pay all the debts. Set the estate to right. And bury me. Bury you? You heard me. I must join my wife. But her home must be mine. This one will be yours. You realize that? I... I, I I'm, I'm sorry, Father. So am I. For many things. Marry your little Jenny. So there will be a Lady Mardyke's to light up this gloomy old place... And banish the shadows forever. Leave me alone now. 
As soon as it's dark, I shall go to her. I shall never return. Father, I... Forget it, Philip Mardax. Soon to be sir. It's too late for me. And I go to... To know better than I deserve. It was three days before they found Sir Bale Mardyke floating face downward, just off the point of Snake's Island. And when they brought him to shore, the exposure to the air set the corpse's face in that haunting grin of death, the rhesus sardonicus. Even the undertaker, with all his art, was unable to wipe it away. I'll be back shortly. John Williams and the Boston Pops Orchestra proudly present... Music of America. Music of America, the ultimate star spangled double album collection. 20 tunes that made America great. Over 70 minutes of your favorite American melodies, performed by our greatest conductor. And you can get John Williams, the Boston Pops, and 20 classic American songs on two records or one extra long play cassette for just $14.95 plus shipping. Only $15.95 plus shipping to the compact disc. Only through this exclusive radio offer from Teledisc. To order Music of America for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, simply call 1-800-292-3800. That's 1-800-292-3800. Credit cards accepted and satisfaction is guaranteed. Just call 1-800-292-3800 for Music of America. In the spirit of holiday giving, the Wall Street Journal offers the following advice. Give your business associates, friends, or even yourself a gift of real value. A gift that can benefit careers and help get the new year off to a successful start. Give the Wall Street Journal. The journal provides a clear, complete look at the business world, and it's organized to give readers the news they need quickly every business day. From the economy to politics, personal investments to corporate finance, marketing to technology and the law, you'll find it in the journal. What's more, the Wall Street Journal is a gift that will be enjoyed long after the holidays. Now, in fact, you can send a 12-week subscription for only $29.75. That's 12 weeks for only $29.75. Call toll-free 800-231-1800. Call now so the journal's gift card in your name will arrive in time for the holidays. Today's Wall Street Journal. Faster, tougher, smarter. Call 800-231-1800 now. Sir Bale Mardyke rests now in the family crypt, but not alone. For the night following the discovery of his body in the lake, Captain Jack brought up the body of a woman in the same spot. A scarf was wound about her face, but when Philip gently unwound it, there was the face of his mother, Libby, lovely and youthful as it was 15 years ago. She lies in the vault, too beside the man who at last gave her and her son what he had denied them so long. His name. Our cast included Russell Horton, Court Benson, Ian Martin, Joan Shea, and E.V. Jester. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. I can't give my child everything, and that really hurts. But he knows I love him, and I'm doing everything I can, like making sure he's healthy. I got this booklet at my food stamp office with all kinds of nutrition tips, like what I should do about snacking and ways I can cut down on too much sugar, fat, and salt. The booklet really helps choose foods for good health and nutrition. That's real important. In the food stamp program, we know the job of mom isn't easy, but we're here to help. Our free nutrition booklet will help you choose the foods that are best for your kids. We've even included some simple recipes for good, healthy eating. For a free copy, stop by your local food stamp office today for the love of your kids. I wish I could give my son more, but we're going to be just fine. A public service message from the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ad Council. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. 
Until next time.